Hey friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Mastery. In this video, we are going to discuss about the temperature, loads and stresses. As we all know, we use expansion joint if the length of the building or length of the structure is more than 45 meter. So in that case, we'll use the expansion joint. In some cases, if we cannot go with the expansion joint, we have to consider the temperature loads in the structure. So in this video, let's discuss in detail about the temperature load, how we can calculate the temperature stresses manually as well as by using the StatPro Connect software. So without further delay, let's begin now. First, let's start off with the expansion joint which is given in IS 456-2000. It is clearly mentioned in IS 456-2000 when the building or structure is normally exceeding 45 meters in length or designed with one or more expansion joint and also they have mentioned that the provision of expansion joint in reinforced cement concrete structure should be left to the discretion of the designer. Sometimes these expansion joints affect the execution of work, construction sequence, packet design and sources of leakage in monsoon during the lifetime of the structure. So to avoid these complications, we can analyze the structure with the temperature load by eliminating these expansion joints. These temperature loads or temperature variation induces stresses if the structure is restrained. This temperature variation and stresses are directly proportional. When the temperature variation is large, there will be a large stresses. If the temperature variation or temperature change is low, then we get a negligible stresses. So the elongation due to the temperature variation can be calculated by using this formula that is delta L is equal to alpha multiplied by L multiplied by delta T. Here delta L is the elongation due to the temperature variation. Alpha is the coefficient of thermal expansion. L is the length of the building or uh, structure. And delta T is the temperature change. So this is the basic concept behind the temperature load. Now let's look into the example of beam and then check how we can calculate the stresses due to temperature variation. And also let's model the same beam in the StatPro Connect software and then we can compare the results. Let's start with the example of cantilever beam. The temperature change will be delta T and the length of the beam will be L and the property will be having alpha as a thermal coefficient and E as the Young's modulus. So here due to this temperature variation what happens it tend to elongate to some extent. So when we heat any material it expands to some extent. So that is what it is happening here. Due to this temperature change it expands to some extent that length we can call it as delta L. That is the change in length elongation due to temperature variation. And alpha is the coefficient of thermal expansion. L is the length and delta T is the temperature change. So here since it is expanding to some extent, there will not be any stresses because the stresses are released here since it elongates the stresses are released over here so there will not be any stresses will get strain over here that can be calculated we know the formula strain epsilon is equal to change in length upon original length so we know the delta l value here change in length which is is equal to alpha multiplied by l multiplied by delta t upon l so this get cancelled so we get the strain is equal to alpha multiplied by delta t so this is the strain value epsilon. Now let's look into the other case which is both end fixed. So in this case what happens if the variation in temperature is in delta T. So in this case this end is fixed. So we will not be getting any elongation over here since we have a fixed end over here. So this elongation will not be there due to this it will create a stresses and then that will be over here. The stresses will be over here. We will not be getting the stresses over here. If we don't have the fixed end then that will be similar to our first case one end fixed and other end free. So since we have the fixed connection over here we will be getting the 
stresses at this end so we have to calculate the stresses stress is equal to strain into strain multiplied by young's modulus e so we know the strain formula already strain is equal to alpha multiplied by delta t alpha multiplied by delta t multiplied by young's modulus so we have the stress that is sigma now due to the stresses this side also will be having the stresses internal stresses like this so due to the stresses we will be getting the force reaction force we can call it as a reaction force so reaction force we have to calculate that is stress multiplied by area it's a simple formula we know the basic formula is Young's modulus which is equal to stress by strain so from this we can derive all the other formulas stress by strain and we know stress is equal to force upon area so from these two formulas we can derive all these things let's recall once again when we have a uh, one end fixed and other end free in that case in that case the temperature variation create a change in length so from that change in length we can calculate the strain value and then when we have the both end fixed we will be getting the stresses so stress is equal to strain multiplied by young's modulus we know the strain value calculated here so the strain formula is alpha multiplied by delta t multiplied by e and then we have to calculate the reaction forces due to this stresses we will be getting the reaction force so the formula is stress multiplied by area now let's model the beam and then do the analysis take the beam grid option and then we can model a beam length of 6 meter close this one we get the beam now just we have to do the basic uh, things like we have to add the support as a fixed support give add select these nodes and then assign next let's add the properties go to define select rectangle let's add the beam size of 0 0.6 by 0 0.6 give add and then close give assign to selected beam it is assigned now properties added and then support conditions added next uh, let's go to the loading part material it is defined already we can check concrete we can give a sign and then go to loading the load case just add as a dead load give dead load and then close now let's add the load item temperature load temperature change for actual elongation just i'm giving 20 degrees give add close this one we can just assign over here so the temperature load is assigned now you can check it is assigned now close and then go to analysis give perform analysis all add close and then go to analysis and design give run analysis so we don't have any errors let's go to the post processing mode and then check the reaction we check the reaction value it is 1563.732 kilonewton let's check the manual calculation whether we are getting the same value or not we have to go to the analytical modeling and then from the stat editor we can take the values to calculate them manually we have defined the material properties so here we have the values e value and alpha value we have so these two values we can take it from here e value is 2.17185 into 10 raised to the power 7 and alpha value is 1 multiplied by 10 raised to minus 5 so these two values we can take it from here you know e value that is Young's modulus value 2.17185 into 10 raised to the power 7 kilonewton per meter square alpha value is 1 multiplied by 10 raised to minus 5 delta t is 20 degrees this is the value we have given in start software 2 and stress we can calculate we know the formula stress is equal to alpha multiplied by delta t multiplied by e so we get the value as 4343.7 kilonewton per meter square if we convert this one into newton per mm square we get 4.3437 and then we know the area 
0.36 meter square because we have taken the beam size as 0 0.6 by 0 0.6 so the area will become 0 0.36 meter square from this we can calculate the force so force is equal to stress multiplied by area so this is the stress value and this is the area and if we multiply this with 1000 we get the value in kilonewton we get the force value in kilonewton so we get 1563.732 kilonewton which is exactly matching with the stat proof analysis see we get the reaction value is 1563.732 similar to the manual calculation this is how you have to calculate the temperature stresses and the reaction forces so friends, I hope you all like this video. Please do comment in the comment box if you have any queries. If you want more videos in StarPro Connect software, please do let me know. And also don't forget to subscribe this channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.